This is the US GDP preview. Okay, gross domestic product. So background, Q4, we had 1.4. The next, in, in the beginning of 2016, only 1.1. And in Q2, 1.4. Now these are annualized figures. That means that quarterly growth was only between 0 0.3, 0.4. If we're generous, 0 0.5. For the United States, it's weak growth. And if we got used to the normal, new normal of two, two and a half percent, it's way below. The Fed, Federal Reserve, and also economists all talk about a rebound in the second half, H2 of 2016. So this is the first release for Q3. It's supposed to happen now. So the new normal of the post-crisis to 2.5%, um, which is very slow, very frustrating. But on the other hand, if we don't have a boom, hopefully we don't have a bust, like we've seen with the real estate boom or the dot-com boom. Uh, that ended with busts, okay? Um, the Fed, the Federal Reserve, always have, uh, has an optimistic forecast and it needs to lower them afterwards. So this time we're expecting uh, hopes also began quite high. We have the Atlanta Fed now cast, also the New York Fed estimates. Uh, they released these estimates throughout the quarter before the first release. It initially began in July at around 3.8%, very optimistic, annualized. Now it's only around 2%. Data throughout the quarter was mediocre, not too bad, but also not too good, not a big bounce, more of a, just a return to normal. Expectations stand on 2.5% year over year, which is about the average of the new normal, but not balancing out the first and second quarters. Durable goods orders tomorrow or Thursday will shape the final predictions for the GDP on Friday. All in all, um, what, what can we expect? The US dollar has the momentum. I believe that 2% or higher should be just good enough, okay? Good enough to keep expectations for the Fed to raise rates in December. We have all these hints about a second rate hike. <laughs> Basically, the second rate hike is just in a year, okay? Yeah, the Fed is moving as gradual as possible. In any case, 2% should be good enough because the bar is relatively low for a rate hike. If we get a result of 3% or even higher, we can expect a rally in the US dollar because uh, the uh, markets will believe that the US economy will uh, rally the world forward and we can have even more rate hikes in 2017. If we have a result of under 2%, that could really hurt the US dollar because that would show that um, growth remains very, very poor, also in the third quarter, that the US economy is basically slowing down, that we can even have a recession, okay? Um, and weak growth also has political implications. It can be used by Trump just a week and a half before the elections to, uh, to say that, um, that the uh, US economy is off the, off the, off the rails, sorry, and uh, that we could see things getting worse from here. And in general, we've seen in 2008 that uh, when the economy looked bad, when the crisis began, this helped the challenger. It helped Obama against uh, McCain at the time, try to inherit Bush. So if we have uh, weak growth this time, it can help the challenger Trump against the incumbent Clinton. Okay. So it also has political implications. It's important to remember that because we're today, two weeks before the elections. Again, I don't have a special update for you, but, uh, but because polls haven't moved too much, but it's worth mentioning that as well. Um, yeah, okay. Anyway, another uh, opportunity to remind you that we have a live coverage, okay? At, it'll begin at 12.15 GMT, Valeria Bidnarek, Mauricio Carrillo and myself will be covering the GDP. Okay, so that's our GDP preview. And again, bottom line, the US dollar doesn't need too much to continue higher. Uh, we would need a big disappointment to hurt the greenback. Okay.